It's Wednesday the 6th of May. If someone asked you, what is the heart of prayer, I wonder what you would answer. Taking into account every part of scripture, I think a strong case can be made that so much prayer grows from when things go wrong and we cry out for help. It's as simple as that. You know, a prayer has been found in a cave in the Middle East. It is from the Old Testament era. There had been some sort of calamity. People had to flee their homes, and hiding in that cave, someone way back then scratched a prayer for help into the cave wall. This is, it seems to me, the same sort of prayer people still pray today, whether they are very religious, a little religious, or not even religious at all. All sorts of people pray at times of crisis and upheaval. I'm certain many have during the different stages of coronavirus. You may be among them. The truth is, there is a wide variety of prayers scattered throughout the entire Bible, but they are particularly distilled and focused in the book of Psalms. There are Psalms that reflect a deeply contented reality. Your relationship with God is strong and all is well in your world. You feel like a tree planted by the water. You are fruitful and you are fresh. Whatever you do prospers and you sense God watching over you. You feel secure and say to yourself, I shall never be shaken. For you tell yourself that the Lord has favoured you. But most of the Psalms are not like this. Actually, 70% of the Psalms are poems of lament and of complaint. They speak of times when things have gone desperately wrong, when life is diminished and distorted. Every conceivable reason for complaint and lament is contained in the Psalms. Injury, illness, bullying, character assassination, actual assassination, our own foolish mistakes, misfortune, sin, depression, personal trauma, national catastrophe, natural disaster, the threat of death. So what do you do in these sorts of situations? Well, you cry out. You cry out for protection, grace, mercy, God's attention, blessing, guidance, deliverance, salvation, help, forgiveness, healing, some sign that you've been heard on high. Remember, the flesh and blood people behind these Psalms are people of faith too, every bit as much as those for whom life is settled and well ordered. But instead of being well pleased with things, in their disruption and in their disorder, they cry out. They cry out saying, how long? How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me? How long will you hide your face? How long must I wrestle with dark thoughts, enduring sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy triumph over me? These are raw, emotional, no-holds-barred encounters with God. Nothing is hidden behind a mask of what you could call churchy, polite, piety. God gets it all, including accusations that God has not been true to God's promises. And God is able to take it all. In the big picture, think of it like this. The prophets bring God's word to the people. The Psalms bring the people's words to God. The prophets tell the people how they have gone wrong, acted on justly, broken the commandments. The Psalms bear the anxiety, the anguish and the anger of the people to the very heart of God. The prophets condemn the people for rupturing the covenant, but the people push back. 
they contest that they have not forgotten God or been false to the covenant. They say, our hearts did not turn back. Our feet did not stray from your path, O Lord. If we had forgotten the name of our God or spread out our hands to foreign gods, our God would have discovered it, since God knows all the secrets of our hearts. However you adjudicate all of this, you have to acknowledge it is a powerfully honest engagement between humanity and God in which deep calls to deep as the waves and breakers of whatever storm people are passing through sweep over them. At the height of the storm the psalmist shouts and shouts something like this, To you, O Lord, I call, to you I cry, what do you gain by my destruction? What do you achieve if I go down into the pit? Will dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful. O Lord, be my help. The expectation in these sorts of psalms is that after the profound exchange, God will intervene to help, to heal, forgive, put right, restore, bring a new start. This is the usual pattern in these psalms and it brings hope for whatever we are passing through, including coronavirus. In your own life, I trust you have had that experience of crying out to God and God turning things around in your life. What should our response be then? In a word, thanksgiving based on the model of the Psalms, something like this could be said. O oh Lord, you turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing to you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. Think about this. It is good to know God when you feel well oriented to God and God seems well oriented to you. But it may be better when your life is fragile or shattered or hanging by a thread and you cry out in your fear and in your pain and in your disorientation. And God comes to you and touches your life in a new way and gives you a new orientation to God. It is these types of experience, experiences so powerfully and poignantly expressed in the Psalms of lament and of complaint, that our relationship to the reality of God is deepened, and our thanksgiving and joy become fuller, more rounded, more resonant, and more authentic. Yes, these are psalms for all times, but they are also very much psalms for our coronavirus times. Let us pray. God, who is open to every human experience and how we express it to you, we give thanks for the psalms that speak to us of orientation to you disorientation from you and new orientation to the depth of your presence and care as you come to us in the midst of life's storms and tumults and troubles. We give thanks that we are able to cry out to you in searing honesty. Be with all who cry out for whatever reason this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we'll reflect together on Friday about when this powerful pattern in the Psalms doesn't hold. Until then, take care and God bless. Oh.